One inner ring mounting method that's commonly used is lock washer lock nut mounting. In this method, a shoulder on the shaft is used to prevent the bearing from sliding in one direction. The shoulder is the place on the shaft where the shaft size changes so that a bearing can be placed against it. The bearing is installed with a press fit against the shoulder. A lock washer and a lock nut are used on the other side of the bearing to prevent the bearing from sliding in the opposite direction. The lock washer has a tab that fits into a slot in the shaft and prevents the lock washer from slipping around the shaft. Other tabs on the lock washer can be bent to fit into slots in the lock nut to prevent the nut from loosening. Another method of mounting a bearing is called end plate mounting. This method is used when the bearing must be mounted on the end of a shaft. When end plate mounting is used, one side of the bearing is held in place by a shoulder on the shaft. The other side of the bearing is held in place by an end plate. This end plate is secured by locking bolts that screw onto the end of the shaft. Another method of inner ring mounting is called eccentric cam mounting. In this type of mounting, the bearing's inner ring is wider than usual. One end of the inner ring has a projection that is slightly off-center from the rest of the bearing. This projection is called an eccentric cam. A locking collar fits over the cam. The shapes of the cam and the locking collar cause the inner ring to be squeezed against the shaft when the locking collar is turned. Another type of inner ring mounting is tapered sleeve mounting. With this method, the inner ring of the bearing is not mounted directly on the shaft. Instead, a slightly tapered metal sleeve is placed on the shaft first. Then the bearing is slipped over the sleeve. The inner ring of the bearing must have a matching taper so that the ring will make full contact with the sleeve. The bearing and the sleeve are secured to the shaft with a lock nut and lock washer. As the lock nut is tightened, it drives the bearing up the tapered sleeve. This causes the sleeve to tighten down on the shaft. The last type of mounting we'll look at is mounting a bearing without an inner ring. In this type of mounting, the outer ring and rolling elements slip over a specially hardened shaft. The rolling elements are in direct contact with the shaft, which acts as the inner ring of the bearing. This kind of mounting is often used when there is not much space around the shaft. Bearings are usually enclosed in housings. The housing is the part that surrounds a bearing and holds it in place. In order to support the bearing, the housing must be able to handle the types of load that the bearing is subjected to. The load is usually transferred from the shaft to the bearing to the housing. Most housings contain lubricant for the bearing, and they also prevent dirt and other contaminants from getting into the bearing. Bearing housings are divided into two types, pillow block housings and built-in housings. Pillow block housings are located outside the machine casing and are separate from it. In some cases, the pillow block housing holds the end of the shaft. In others, the shaft passes through the housing. Pillow block housings can be either solid or split, and they come apart in different ways. Some solid pillow block housings have a removable cover. Once the cover is removed, the housing can be moved out of the way and the bearing can be taken off the shaft. With a split pillow block housing, the top of the housing can be taken off. The shaft can then be lifted out so that the bearing can be removed. 